that definitely makes sense. You know, that, uh, people play Donkey Kong for fun, but there's very few representatives worldwide that are playing Donkey Kong uh, for seriousness. Uh, but we are going to see the Donkey Kong versus Enderman, aka Steve, matchup on a tiny, tiny stage of Smashville. And now we're going to see how DD wants to play this match about. Is it going to be through a war of attrition, or are we going to oppress Donkey Kong with our faster options and try and get as much damage on early as we can? And we're seeing exactly what we anticipated seeing. Abusing Donkey Kong's disadvantage state and being able to escape the advantage with tools like Minecart and Falling Up Air. Pay attention to the resources here. They're going to Smashville. I do like this choice. I know we talked about this yesterday on comms. And oh no, on DDSDs. Uncharacteristic SD. You can see DD on, on the camera saying, no, -uh, no, no, no. That, that was, trust, this is not the end. I mean, that was totally not intentional. Back to what I was saying, this is a stage where it's harder to get iron. You pull much more wood on Smashville. Mm, yes. Definitely something that we are going to have to consider. Does Donkey Kong have good options for breaking blocks and, can, and being able to oppress whenever Steve is trying to mine? I would think it would be something like your F tilt or maybe like back air you would try to break the blocks with, I guess? Possibly here. Oh, back to stage, getting back on with a get up attack. That's crucial, but all it takes is a dash attack and just some very normal type ground moves to get Donkey Kong off stage. But Donkey Kong's doing a good job of racking up some damage before losing this first stock. Uh, the up, <laughs> the uh, the armor there on the on the spin is 190 on the side of Chunky Kong. That is huge raid. Back air doesn't connect, and now it feels like this is a perfect position for Chunky Kong to be in. You have all the rage in the world to work with to essentially explode Steve. And you're at 190%, so Steve doesn't have a lot of options to go for normal combo confirms. It's going to have to be raw hits. Not that Steve doesn't have a plethora of those. Okay, yeah, I mean, just a minecart grab at 190%. Good luck mashing out of that in time. And uh, suddenly we're at two stocks versus two stocks, though DD's got 90% on him. Uh, looks like maybe racking up uh, Junkie Kong to, you know, 50. That's that's one combo, and here's combo number two. Don't even have a don't even have a weapon. Yeah, you know, no pickaxe, nothing. Uh, no axe. So <laughs> yeah, and oh, offstage, even percentages though at, at two stocks each. This is kind of what Didi wanted to get to at least. But all it takes is for Chunky Kong to get one solid option read to get the stock advantage back, and then just continue that momentum into the next one. Didi's got diamond on deck. Didn't mind too much losing that stock, and is going to look to trade it right back. Again, now trying to find a way to at least get off the ledge on Chunky Kong. The anvil connects, and now DD probably has to play a little bit more conservative. Just noticing, I forgot that Steve uses axe to mine on this stage also over the pickaxe. Uh, that is something to keep an eye on. And something else that we have to consider is that because DD lost his stock so early, he spent the entire second stock without diamond in hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you're basically playing last stock diamond, hoping that you can get a kill confirm and mine your diamond back, just in case Whoa. you run out of diamond on this stock. But you're gonna basically be running two diamonds on this stock if you want any chance of winning this. And that back air is going to get it back to a point where you're gonna be feeling more comfortable about that. However, Didi needs diamond on deck because I don't think that his diamond resources are for long. It's not even that the diamond resources are for long. We noticed that he was able to fight through Donkey Kong's neutral B with back air. So the DK punch came out, the back air beat it, but now DD has essentially a relatively fresh pickaxe. He's mining away resources, low on iron. The axe is gone. So now DD does not have a safe way to farm as much, but back air connects and that will do it. Never count Steve out. No reason to farm if you're just swinging for the kill. I was anticipating that Didi would need to mine for more resources, only having one iron on deck. But even after that tragic SD on the first stock, Didi figured it out, brought it back in the last stock with diamond, taking two stocks with a single diamond also. Very impressive stuff from Didi. Especially against a heavy character like Donkey Kong. Now, I would think that Didi doesn't want to go back to a stage like Smashville. It seemed like it did mess up his general flow of resources. And if we go to count, oh, that is brave. That's yeah. a lot of stone and metal that you are handing to Didi. Yeah, I'm wondering what the what the choice. 
is for? What what is the reason for taking this stage? What what's the game plan, right? We've seen also how adept Steve is at walling himself onto the platform. <laughs> where Donkey Kong definitely doesn't have a way to really deal with that. But walling himself onto the platform to mine resources, you're I think that Chunky Kong has just decided like the resources didn't make the difference, so I'm gonna give him the resources and hope that I have a better opportunity to do what I want to do, get my game plan going on a stage, and that's why he chose Kalos. Yeah, I do like that logic, but at the same in the same breath, you're giving DD so many more resources. You're already up to 89%. Yes, you're able to push DD to the corner and continue pressure. There is ways to continue your combos using the Ding Dong, but well, let's be completely honest. You're playing against Steve on a stage where resources are not a problem if you get Giant Punch. Yeah, that Giant Punch read was hot off the press. And uh, <laughs> let, let's see, though, because because we saw this before. Chunky Kong had a stock lead before. DD said, I didn't need that. And especially with how easy it is going to be for DD to get these resources, especially no. iron. <laughs> these giant punches are just so funny. Especially iron. Uh, there's going to be more that Chunky Kong is going to have to fight through. Just more, period. More everything that he's going to have to fight through. I mean, this is, this is free content for Mars with DK <laughs> in top 64, but... What are you doing? <laughs> says Mars somewhere. <laughs> Equalize is using the anvil. And now I think DD has to play. Oh, oh my god, that actually muscled through. This is going to be combo. What a confirm! That kills! Uh -oh. DD showing the prowess, the knowledge, and the execution all in one with that combo. Fantastic stuff. And. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about you, but that was that didn't look like camping to me. So that uh, honestly, this is some hot Steve. I mean, I I want DD to slow it down, but oh my gosh, this character can just do some really goofy things. 40% onto the board, dash attack and next. Chunky Kong in a really desperate situation to try and come back to the stage. The back air connects. Just whiffing on the down smash. Look at this. One interaction gone awry. 84, 97 down on the board. Never mind. You're, oh, you're not dead yet. Yeah, that anvil was hot, but the back air is hotter, and that's going to be game two, going to DD. Chucky Kong choosing Kalos there. I think what you said it was not a was great brave. option. It was definitely brave, and it was it was a choice that <laughs> needed, I think, needed to happen for Chucky Kong's knowledge uh, and, and experience, but. I don't, I don't see us going back there. Mm -mm. I mean, this is one of the moments where Chunky Kong has to dig deep and seriously evaluate what's it meant. Huh? Huh? Uh, Does DD play Game & Watch? That wasn't in the pool of characters that I have listed. All right, who had DD playing Game & Watch on their bingo card? Anybody? Anybody? No? No, no, no Game & Watchers? Okay. Um, so I, I still think this matchup is pretty awful for TK. Yeah, I mean, it's not just better. <laughs> you can just push buttons and do exactly what you want. Yeah, this is, a, I, I don't know if I would call this BM from DD or what, but uh, I, I don't personally know that DD has a game uh, to watch. Look, DD could roast me with Little Mac. I am really bad at this game. I, I agree with that, but, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to be so brave as to compare my own skill level to that of Chunky Kong's. Uh, so again, DD just looking for consistent combo starters. The bear connects, and now should we hit the ledge? There's so many things that DD. Okay, never mind. Oh, the taunts as well. Yeah, DD is uh, DD is feeling himself. DD is really feeling themselves. I wonder how Mimi this is, right? Like D DD is known for playing Steve, a character that people generally despise for one reason or another. Uh, and then he said, you know what? I won with Steve twice. Uh, people are probably going to hate me for that. Let's meme a little harder, pick another character that people hate winning, and just do it again with Game & Watch. Wait, no, no, no. This is a, this is a really, really five-head play. Because if he wins with Steve, that purports the agenda of the no Steve fun havers. So if you win with Game & Watch, Steve is the problem. That's true. That's true. People are going to say, oh, there's no way that Chunky Kong can beat Steve. But DD is saying, OK, well, here, I'll give you an opportunity. Let's choose a different character, not Steve, and see if that Steve is really the problem or if I'm just that good of a player. We know that DD is that good of a player, but the Steve deniers may not. And good connection from Chunky Kong. A attempt to equalize the game, a bit of percent on the board. But it feels like there is so much that Chunky Kong is working against, especially against Game & Watch. 
the aerials alone are enough to drive you crazy. But down air connects, still doesn't close out the stock just yet. But DD doing everything they can to try and secure this game. Ooh. Giant Punch doesn't connect just yet. Yeah, this is uh, this is looking. I mean, more even for sure. This is definitely looking more even than the last games have. But 182 percent, just about anything is gonna kill. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. A bomb. I wonder what he's doing there. I, I've never yeah. seen that before. That's a very interesting technique. Yeah, I wonder that, if that helps with this movement in I neutral. Think, yes, it's, it's it's kind of like uh, practicing. Crouch canceling. Yeah, exactly. It's crouch canceling. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit more coming out on the side of Didi. We're just trying to continue so many of these aerials of str stringing together. But man, Didi is just creating this oppressive wall of aerials that it feels like Chunky Kong has no real way to get through. Yeah, you know, we've been memeing this a lot, but I do want to hand it to Didi. Uh, every time that Chunky Kong has gone for some of these, uh, like, monkey spins on the grounded ones that have armor, Didi has consistently crossed it up. That's just really impressive. And just also I, I'm showing why Game & Watch has so many good matchups and options to try and cover. 111 on the board, DD just using the aerials to connect. Down smash to F smash. Oh, not enough, okay. Yeah, you're across the stage, but back here on the edge of the stage is gonna take it. The meme lord, DD is taking that set 3-0. And uh, I mean, that that's a... <laughs> That's a morale killer, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I think there's a, you know, the two the two dimensions of pain have fully come into force, and that will close it out. DD takes the step, showing off some great crouch canceling, and... Yes. Crouch canceling indeed. DD is, I think, the, the DD special is demoralizing your opponents. Either on the stage or on Twitter, DD is known for that type of I don't know. Personality? <laughs> Why are we talking about this? Everybody knows what this is. Uh, like, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's a type of sportsmanship. It's something. It's uh, something. But good job, ZD. Uh, continuing the bracket and continuing the winner's side run for Georgia. Yes. As locals to this you know, area, we're really excited to see a character, him carry the torch for us and try and continue on into top eight. Yeah, into the top eight. Currently, the uh, the players that have secured their spot in the top eight are Didi and Aaron. Aaron taking it 3-0 over Jazo. Wow, that's a 